Hello, I've got a nice little project on the go today. Hopefully not too strenuous. I cross my fingers in case it turns into a can of worms, but hopefully it won't. Basically, I've got myself a coffee machine. It's a nice one, uh, three group, great big thing. It demanded a five kilowatt electrical supply, so because you're not allowed to do your own electrics, I, uh, I got an electrician in to come and put a supply in from there that goes through the wall into my main fuse board here. The nearest water pipes are over here behind the oven. So we're gonna take a supply up this wall, over the top of that cupboard, along there, onto there, through there, and then along the top of the wall here and down here somewhere. Out of all the trades, plumbing's the one where you can probably save yourself a few quid easiest. Most plumbers these days just use push fit connections, so it's just plastic pipes pushed into plastic connectors. Uh, there's not even any brazing involved, so pretty straightforward. So let's get on. So it goes without saying that I cut off the cold water feed, and the first connection that I'm going to make is this three way connector. So what I've done, I've cut one of my um, cold water pipes, and I'll put one of these inserts in each end of the cut inside the pipe itself. And then it just goes into here and into here and then our new supply comes up off the top and that's the one that will go to the coffee machine. Next thing is to very accurately measure and cut a piece of water pipe to take us above that cupboard in the corner there. To cut plastic water pipe I just use a serrated knife. And then again, if you put the plastic inserts in the end of the pipe, it stops it getting crushed and makes a better fitting. So we'll plug this into our three-way, and then to that end we'll attach a 90 degree connector. Push fit connections are super easy to use. You just make sure that the, um, the screw part of the fitting is loose, then you push in until basically as far as it'll go, and then just tighten it up. Okay, then we need a piece to go along the top of there. Back on. Insert it into the end. Now obviously I'll be pinning this to the wall using some little clips, but for now I'm just making sure I've got the right length of pipe. Next, to drill a hole in the wall here. shelf up is giving us loads of room now. It's only taken about half an hour so far. So all we've got to do is come down here and then put a fitting onto this. This is the back of the coffee machine. It looks like it's standard wash machine fitting. So we should be able to manage that. What I don't want to do is have this above the electric. So what I'll do, I'll put in a, an extender because I've run out of pipe. Uh, I'll put a straight through connector on and then I'll attach another piece of pipe so that it comes below the sockets. Just for the sake of health and safety. That's the compression fitting tight, so theoretically that shouldn't leak. We'll put another clip under there to secure it. Okay, that's nice. 
All right, that should be it all done now. So I'll put the water back on, obviously check for any leaks. Um, it's not a fantastically aesthetically pleasing installation, but it'll do and it's probably saved myself 150 quid in plumbing fees. So there's the machine turned on it, and it's obviously filling itself with water. Now, what we've got going on here? So we have some pressure, pump, boiler. So that's the boiler pressure, that's the pump, that's at four bar, so that's got loads of pressure. I guess it'll start flashing when it heats up. So it's been about 15 minutes and the pressure on the boiler has gone right up to 1.4. Uh, we're still at four bar on the pump and this is stopped flashing so I'm going to say that that indicates that it's heated up. So let's have a little... Oh, yeah, that's hot. Brilliant. So I would test it but I don't have any coffee beans. So we're going to have to come back to the testing part. Plus it needs a good clean anyway. So bringing the coffee machine in has provoked a little bit of a, a, an evolution of this area. This bakery, I've actually been polishing it like a stone for the last 10 years and the layout has changed considerably. So when I got here, it was just like a massive empty space. Um, there was a servo of a fridge there that had cheese in and there were some shelves behind it with some bread on and the rest of it was just like empty. But over the years, it's sort of changed into what it is now. These were my mother's shelves out of her shop. These things I built. This thing I made when I learned to weld after doing the transit van. Um, the only thing with this is that I, I got the perspex for it and it actually expanded because of the heat of the bakery. So it's another job to do, it needs to come off and be cut so that it sits flush because it's kind of buckled now. To make this space more about sort of coffee, since I've got this coffee machine that I didn't really intend to buy, it was quite a curious circumstance as to how, how I came to, into possession of this. Um, but like, I'd never really wanted to have a coffee machine. I used to make do with this little guy for ages um, until it broke down. And then I paid somebody to repair it and it broke down again. So we went without coffee facilities for a while. What was putting me off, I couldn't be bothered to do the plumbing. So I thought that was going to be more of a chew on than it was. But look, look how easy it was, it took me an hour. Look, here's my weekly flour. No, it's, that's an exaggeration, it's not weekly flour. That's a week and a half's worth of flour there. And that all gets turned by hand into loaves of bread. It's ridiculous. And that's why I've never got enough time to do like the actual maintenance that's required. This mixer here needs an overhaul. My other videos, this mixer has featured, it has like a clonking noise. And that's basically, there's, there's play in the shaft, in the main shaft in here. And it knocks back and forward. And eventually it's gonna like, there's gonna be problems. It's gonna like smash the gears. Um, it's not gonna be good. So it needs overhauled. Also it could do with the paint. The oven's another project for the future. So basically it hasn't got the steam capacity, so I can't, I can't inject steam into the oven. Steam's important for bread because if you're in an oven and it's a very dry environment, the crust of the bread sets really quickly. If it's moist and steamy, the loaf expands further before the, the crust actually sets. So you get a better, more wholesome looking loaf. It would be lovely to have that done one day. I don't know why you get people to fix these things. So it's like if you, if you went to Hobart and got somebody to come out, it would be literally, it would be thousands of pounds to have this thing fixed. Um, because there's just so much, so few people who actually deal with it. As for the oven, yeah, it's uh, getting an, electri like a, an electrical repair firm to come and do this. It would be so much money. It would be literally, it would be thousands. It would be more than I pay for the oven. But, you know, it's on the list of things that you're doing. So if that was like working perfectly and had steam in it, then this bigger would, would be so much better to work in. If that wasn't making like a crazy clunking noise, then it would be a much more pleasant environment. That you can hear upstairs, in, in where I live uh, above the bakery. That's been a good addition. See, that's the bun machine, R2D2 that I got out. Um, that saves me a lot of time, and it means that my wrists aren't fall to pieces from, from doing loads of buns. This little thing, it broke down recently, so, you know, all these things in here, they, they all seem to like go along for ages, and then suddenly everything will break at once. So this, it's a good mixer. There's a, there's a good story behind this mixer, but I'll, I'll do that in another video. Um, obviously I got this for free. A lady called me out of the blue and gave me this mixer. Um, it's, a, it's a long story and I'll, I'll not get into it, but 
it was one of those things in life that don't happen very often. So anyway, I tried to look after this. It's a Hobart, the great machines that last forever. This one's really low hours. But first it gave us some grief because the safety cutout switch was preventing it from operating. Um, and then I basically overworked. I put stuff in that was too much for it and it's, it's got overload protection and all that had to be changed and it was quite involved. It's all good though. So as, as a bakery though, bear in mind this was an empty room. For a one man operation, this is pretty nice. You get your mixer, you've got your big mixer, nice big bench where I work, all racked out underneath. Trays, door trays and baking trays. I've got this bake off oven for like pies and stuff like that. That's been a great machine. It's, it's only needed one repair over the 10 years. Um, and it's, it, it's a cracking machine. That I paid 600 pounds for that and I've, I've totally had my money's worth out of that. There's a cold room in there that I, that I put in with help from um, a fridge guy. Every year it needs a top up of gas and it just so happens that at the moment it's low on gas and I can't get hold of the fridge guy. It's really difficult running a business when you're trying to get hold of people to do things for you. Like I say, that's an essential, that's an essential part of this business. I use that every day. It retards the bread overnight. Without it, it means I can't put the sourdough into the fridge overnight and keep it rising very slowly until it's perfectly ready to bake in the morning. But if you can't get anybody to fix things, like what, what are you gonna do? You've got to fix them yourself. But who's got the time to fix everything or learn how to fix everything? I suspect it's been a bit unloved, this thing. It's new though. There it is in all its glory, ready to go to work. And because I found some beans, I'm gonna to have to make a coffee, a proper coffee. Even though it is 10 o'clock at night and I'm about to go to bed. No, I'm not, because I didn't turn it on. <laughs> what a dope. So I happen to come into possession of a, um, an under-counter fridge which would be ideal for doing the sandwiches in underneath this bench and that would finish this little area off uh, and make it a lot more functional. I've been putting this off a little bit because I'm going to have to cut this and it's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, I probably should also weld some of these bars here in between the two legs because it's not going to be very stable. Um, but also I think it's going to be actually sitting on top of the, um, the fridge itself by two or three mil. So it's very possible that it may be just like hanging on top of the fridge. Um, we'll cut it and see how it goes. Here we are after cutting the, the frame out. It's really stable, so I'm not even going to bother welding the legs on. If I ever um, want to do that, I can in the future, but really I can't see that ever happening. I hope my luck's in. I hope the bench is just tall enough for me to slide this in. Without making a scene. That's miles off as well. Got some feet up there, right at that lowest adjustment. 
Right, we're just going to have to see what it looks like straddled on the top, but unfortunately that means moving the coffee machine. I knew this would happen. I knew this would never be straight Okay. Hmm. How can I do this? Help us feel, and this is not gonna go well. Oh, gonna get it. Okay, that'll do. Look. Oh, how typical is that? <laughs> Three cutting discs later, I've managed to cut this off, but what a absolute balls I've made of it. Um, I didn't even realise there was the frame behind it. I thought I was just cutting through this first skin here. Anyway, not to worry. Uh, we'll clean the mess up and then uh, tidy that up because it looks like a dog's dinner. Okay, so I found a bit of aluminium angle. Uh, I've cut the size, and that should tidy that up a bit. Okay, so my aluminium strip looks okay. It smartens it up, but I'm gonna have to use nuts and bolts to attach it and I don't have any with me at the moment so um, I'm going to order them and in the meantime just so that it's functional while we're waiting for the post to arrive and so that nobody cuts the fingers off I'll just tape this under here just now There we go, look, there's the finished installation. We've got a nice fridge in here now. It's running nicely, it was down to four degrees before, so that's cool. It's gonna make making sandwiches a lot easier because it means you don't have to run over there to get stuff out of the bottom of this little fridge in, in the middle of the shop. So that should make that area a lot more serviceable. That's one more thing ticked off my massive list of things to do. I'll get there in the end. And then probably when I get to the end of it, I'll cross the last thing off and then that's it, I'll just like, <laughs> Part of the tag and struck down.
Cheers. My morning coffee will never be the same again now.